Hi, I am so excited to be here today. It's been a couple of months since I made a video and uh, just because we moved out of state and my craft room was completely torn apart, but got it back together and these cards were the first thing I created and I had so much fun making them. Couldn't mail them out fast enough. Um, I love the acetate, working with the acetate and how the cards look like they're suspended when they're sitting on a on a countertop or displayed. And I also loved how each card was unique um, in the lavender and the way that it was put together. It made it really fun to put together. Each card has three panels. There's a panel for writing on the top in the center with a little lavender on it and then also on the back. And um, another thing about these cards is that any design could be used as far as dies go or design on the front. Working with acetate is not hard at all. In fact, it, it scores very nicely. I use the Heartfelt Creations um, clear, card, clear card stock um, just because it's very thick and I didn't have to worry about my scoring tool going through it. Um, it's very tough stuff. The trick with it is just to make a really deep, good score line and then to just kind of take it and fold those corners while you're holding the edges together uh, before you use your bone folder. After you do that, all it takes is a couple swipes with that bone folder and you've got a permanent crease and the card is very stiff and rigid. This die by Sue Wilson is the Canadian Collection die and it's beautiful. It was too large for this card that I wanted to create and so I'm going to show you how I made it smaller with the frame. And I just started by uh, die cutting it as normal and then I took the top of the die, positioned it where I wanted it to be, and you can tell when the die is perfectly matched back up because it kind of clicks in and having those right and left squares already cut was a big help with lining that die up. So I just taped it and then I ran it through just the top. I didn't um, re-die cut the entire frame. I could have, but I didn't want to um, press my luck with something being off. So I just did the, the top couple of rows. So after I die cut it again, I just trimmed around the edge of the frame. There's a little pinpoint that goes around the edge. And so I wasn't concerned about that first die cut that I had made because it was just going to be trimmed off anyway. So speaking of pinpoints, I used the pinpoint rectangle layers and I used two um, together that I taped together to create a little frame. And I made a frame out of uh, foam and the ivory paper as well so that it would give it a little bit more dimension up on top. Next I did some coloring with some uh, Distress Inks, the Wilted Violet and Seedless Preserves, and I did a background so that I could cut out the really small pieces of the lavender dye that I was going to use. The larger ones I colored um, after, but these small ones needed to be cut prior. And then I did a um, a yellow background that would sit behind this grid collage and this grid collage could have been positioned a number of ways and room for a sentiment could also be made um, down in that bottom right corner or top left. So I just glued on the grid collage. Up. There was no rhyme or reason to how I colored the lavender. I just took out three, probably three different colors of the, um, the purple distress ink and a couple of colors of the green and I just kind of uh, started daubing the color on. And putting these little lavender buds together was really the fun part. I shortened stems, I glued them down and bent them into different positions that I wanted them to be. Again, I wasn't concerned about making each card uniform. I just had fun with the positioning of the lavender. So next I assembled the uh, foam backing to the frame that was going to be positioned outside and that's where I realized I made a mistake. I had glued the lavender down before I glued the frame down and for the dimension the lavender buds were supposed to, a couple of them were supposed to come out over top of the frame. So I wanted to rip up the card, I really did, but I thought you know I'm going to leave this in the video, be oh there a bud even came off. I left it in the video because that is how it really works. It's real life. And in the end, you know, 
you really couldn't tell at all. And when it comes down to it, these are handmade cards and sometimes little imperfections are what make them special. So I did resist the urge to rip it up and I'm really glad I did. So I guess I'd just like to encourage other mistake makers out there, <laughs> save the card. Um, just keep working through those mistakes and, and you know, it, it just doesn't matter in the end. I used a mono eraser. My fingers got a little inky, so I had some ink to remove, and those work really well. This next part is the tricky part. When the glue dries, you know you're not going to see much of it, and the way that this card is made from the acetate, it doesn't open wide um, anyway, so I wasn't too concerned if a little bit of glue showed. I did put it on nice and neat, though, and here's where it is kind of unforgiving. When you lay this card down over the acetate, just let it lay. Don't try to smush it around and reposition it once you get it down because that glue, if it gets on the clear acetate where nothing else is, it will definitely show. And it's really hard to remove once it's on there. Even with a mono eraser, it'll start making other sc scratches. So um, just be real, real gentle and take your time putting that down there. So I'm making the inside panel with the little sprig of lavender, and um, again, this could be any die set. It would just be adorable with so many different things. But uh, here's the trick to putting it on the inside. You glue the back of it, lay it down, um, upside down, and you put the acetate over top of the panel. And then you glue the back side on, and then you glue that over top um, and match it up so that um, it can't be seen, you know, either way looking through. And then I just did one on the top, and that was it. I used a Golden Sunset Nouveau. There is Swarovski crystal sets that do match. I used a, a, a Darling sequin mix that is the same color um, as the Nouveau, and it's little hearts, and I did just a few here and there um, just to kind of give it that little sparkle, not too many. I loved how uh, the different colors of envelopes really set it off in different ways. The green was beautiful. Um, ivory was even gorgeous with it. Purple looked good. Um, in the end, I really loved the contrast between the gold and that lavender. Oh gosh, it just it's kind of a metallic envelope, and so I just thought that looked beautiful. Most of all, it was it was just fun to actually create a card and mail it out. You know, I've got so many projects and so many ideas that a lot of times those ideas will sit for a long time before they come together. So when this idea did come together quickly and um, I just loved the look of them, I just made a lot of them, sent them out, everybody enjoyed getting them, and it's just a great way to stay in touch. And it's a great gift um, to put, you know, five or six of them together and, and give as a gift. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and I will hopefully have another video coming out very soon. Bye!